Good night, good night, and welcome to another great episode, another inspiring service, another opportunity to hear God's word, and another chance to heed the call to surrender your life to Jesus. We are delighted that you are present and that you have tuned in. Tonight is a special night, and at the end of the session, you will exclaim, I am delivered, praise the Lord, Amen. for it is deliverance night. Thank you, our dear audience, for listening to us this evening. I am Sindel Clark. And I am Deborah Shalry. Our God deserves all the honor and all the glory for making it possible for us to gather at Castries Esdier Church on High Street, experiencing the warmth from the fellowship with loving and kind brethren. Here we are sharing the word. Come and experience it live. We are also sharing the word virtually through, through Castries' YouTube page. So remember, please remember to share the link. You can also check out our Castries Communications Notebook Facebook page. Whatever avenue you use, it is definitely a blessing to be tuned in to God's word. In addition, please participate and join the choristers in the melodious singing. Before you do this, we shall pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for all that you have done for us. Thank you for bringing us here safely. Thank you for taking us safely throughout a, the, another week. And as we experience the blessings this evening, I ask that you please brief us and help us to share whatever we have learned tonight with others. In your name I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Happy Sabbath, church. We want to give God praise because he deserves all the glory and all of the honor. So we invite you to sing with us. Our first song is number 393, Lord of the Sabbath. Lord of the Sabbath and his light. that golden morning if you long for that golden morning let me just see you wave your hands and if you view in online just type in the chat golden morning and sing with us number 205 lift your voices in song
to stand with us as we sing our theme song I am a friend of God everyone. The privilege has been given to me to welcome each and every one of us, of you, to the Lord's Tabernacle tonight. 
to participate in yet another night of Castries Impact Family Enrichment Seminar 2022. For those of you in-house, I say a hearty welcome. Thanks for coming night after night. For those of you online, I bid you an even heartier welcome. And for all our visitors here tonight in-house and online, I say a very, very big welcome to you. Thanks for accepting our invitation to be here instead of being elsewhere. Let us prepare our hearts to receive the many more blessings in store for us tonight. Oh yes, there are a lot more in store. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Welcome one, welcome all. Sweet, sweet, 
Amen, amen. Wonderful singing. Let's all bow our heads and close our eyes for prayer. Almighty Father God, right now as we come to you, we'd like to thank you, Lord Jesus, for bringing us here tonight whereby we could glorify and praise your name, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your mercies throughout this week, Father God. We thank you for your loving kindness upon us. Father God, you've been with each and every one of us throughout this week, Lord God. And we want to praise and glorify your name. So we pray, Father God, that you would put your Holy Spirit in our hearts, Father, and help us so that we could raise a song of praise to you. Lord, right now as we come to you, we pray on behalf of the speaker for the night, Lord God. We pray that his words would be able to touch every one of us and help each of us come just a little bit closer to you, Father God. Touch everybody in the church who is here tonight. Touch everybody who is listening or watching from online, Lord God. We pray that you would speak to us, Father. Guide us, direct us. Help us to understand what is your will in all of this, Lord Jesus. You know who heard tonight who was not planning to hear, Father God. Be with them, be with us all, and help us to glorify and to praise your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God, praise God. Sweet beautiful land, sweet beautiful land. Are you having a wonderful time in this family life? Um, in this family, family, family life crusade? Just wave your hand. Wave your hand. And those of you who are online, I know you're having a wonderful time. Let's not forget, today is Friday. Today is the day where we ought to have a thousand families viewing. Why? Because it's God's last warning message. We are living in the time of God's judgment. And God wants his people, God wants the world to hear his last warning message before Christ comes the second time. So we need to share it. We need to share. We need to share. Now, I know we have plenty of visitors online, and we also have individuals in-house. Tonight is a special night. It is deliverance night where you can get a touch from the Lord. The pastor and the elders are waiting so that the Lord can bless you in a special way. But those of you who are online, you're missing out on this. However, you can close your eyes and ask God to anoint you and to touch you. Now, I told you before that we have prayer cards online and you can feel the necessary information so that we can pray for you. Please fill the prayer card online so that we can pray for you. We also have baptismal card, a baptismal card here too. And you can fill the baptismal card because tomorrow, God spare, we are planning a grand baptism for you. So please fill the baptismal card. You also can get access to us we have a hotline. It's also on the chat, 758-518-2130. And you can call. Someone is waiting on the other line, on the other end of the line, to listen to you and to communicate with you. Now, first day we had a, not first day, but Wednesday we had a wonderful time. First day was rest night. Single and sweet. Single and sweet. And, to, and, and this evening, Friday, it is entitled Resolving Marital Conflict. Resolving Marital Conflict. Now, God is ensuring that the family is well equipped so that we can have peace home and we can reflect the character of Jesus. So, if you know a visitor or visitors who are married, please share the link. Please share the link with them. Now, now is the moment, just before the preacher comes on, for you to share the link. Share the link with at least five or ten visitors and let them know 
that the Family Life Enrichment Seminar is on and they can get information that will bless their family. Now on Sabbath, we have a very strange topic, but I know the message is very rich. It's entitled, Tama, I am sorry. The Bible's Me Too moment. Tama, I am sorry. The Bible's Me Too moment. And please believe Brother Ogis when he's telling you that this is God's last warning message before Christ comes. So you need to make use of it. God has chosen the best opportunity, the best moment, the best period so that you can know about Jesus as Savior and Lord that you may accept him. We don't accept God when we want, but God plans it well and gives us the best opportunity to accept him. So let's continue to follow this family life enrichment seminar and enjoy it, but also follow God's instruction with respect to the family. Thank you very much, and see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. in the Castries SDA Church, where we'll have a grand time together. Thank you very much. A pleasant good evening to everyone. I would like to join my voice with Brother Macarius in encouraging you to share the link. Those present here this evening, as well as our audience online, I encourage you to share the link this evening as we target 1,000 families viewing the program tonight and every other night of this week. At this time, it's an opportunity for us to share in the program and to participate. I would like to invite our ushers to, to assume their position. And I invite you now to bow your heads with me and those of us who are online to assume a posture of prayer as we petition our Heavenly Father prior to the collection of the evening's offering. Heavenly Father, it is with thankfulness we approach your divine presence this evening. We want to thank you for the Sabbath day, a day that we could put away things of a secular nature, dear God, and worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for the physical strength that you've blessed us with, that we can work. We also want to thank you for the mental strength and for all the attributes that you've blessed us with so that we can work, earn a living, take care of our families, and also participate in the worship by sharing in the offering at this time. Heavenly Father, as the offering is collected, we ask that you may bless everyone who gives. We also pray, dear God, that you would bless those who don't have to give. But more importantly, dear God, we pray that all of us would give our hearts to you before time changes eternity. Bless us and continue to be with us this evening as the program unfolds. We thank you for Christ's sake. Amen. During the collection... We'll have special music by Trio Plus. Lord, I will, I will, I will follow you up the mountain tops, far across the seas. When I hear your voice, no matter what may be, I will lay my burdens down and I will follow you. Lay your burdens down by the riverside, down by the riverside, down by the riverside.
Amen. Praise the Lord. Good evening, saints. And good evening to our visitors also. And good evening to those viewing online. One of my family's favorite passages is found in Psalm 92. And it is Psalm 92, verse 1 and 2. And it says, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Church, it is a good thing to give thanks and praise unto the Lord. Why? Because he's a good God. He has sustained us and he has kept us alive and well. And this is why we're going to praise him continually. And this is why we're going to petition him now in prayer. I would invite you to please stand with me and reverently bow as I offer prayer this evening for the sins of the living God, for those who have already given their hearts to Jesus Christ, and for those who will be doing so come tomorrow and the balance of the crusade time. Let us pray, Heavenly Father, loving God, we give thee glory, honor, and praise. We glorify your most holy name, for you are worthy to be praised, dear God. We call upon your name, dear Father, and we give thee the glory that is due to your name, because you have called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. And you have saved us through the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. We are grateful that his blood was shed, and that it is able to cleanse us from all sins. And so we prostrate before thee, asking thee, dear God, to be merciful to us, to cleanse us and to make us whole. We present to thee our broken bodies. We present to thee our cares, our perplexities, our trials, our difficulties, dear God. We cannot carry our burdens. These burdens are crushing us, and so we give them to thee. For you said that your burden is light. Your yoke is easy, dear God, and your burden is light. So we give to thee our yoke and our burdens. And Father, we are taking upon us your yoke, which is easy, and your burden, which is light. So we give thee the glory and the honor and the praise for allowing us to come to thee boldly to find grace and mercy. We present the sins before thee, together with our loving visitors. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray the Holy Spirit's anointing on every member bowing before thee, both near and far. I pray for individual families that they will be anointed with the Holy Spirit. They will be empowered to call upon you to be saved, dear God. Bring salvation to every one of us and keep us true and faithful in serving thee. Father, it is a good thing to give thanks and praise unto your name, almost high. And so we are praising thee for what you have done for us and what you will do for us. Grant every one of us the anointing of the Holy Spirit and may hearts be healed, may hearts surrender to thee. May we leave this place rejoicing in your, in your most holy name. Those who are broken, those who are broken in heart, I pray that the Spirit of God, even as the oil of comfort, will rest and abide with everyone and grant us healing. So receive our praise, receive our worship, dear God, and we thank thee for doing this for us. Bless again every individual here, and we praise thee for doing this for us, and we ask this and many other mercies in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath, Pastor. And those of you online, a pleasant Sabbath to you and welcome. Tonight, as we announce, we move into our deliverance service. Friends, brethren, God is always willing to break the shackles of his people. It is God's desire that his children are free. The Bible tells us of a woman that was suffering with infirmities many years. And when Jesus saw her, he touched her and said, Daughter, thou art loose. Tonight, you may be dealing with an issue for many years. Whatever it may be, you may have it may be a physical issue where you have been to the doctor and there seems to be no change. It may be a situation where it is a communal situation, you and your neighbor, and there is something that you all just cannot seem to settle on. Tonight, God wants to give you that peace of mind. And those of you online, I want you to share in the prayer with us. And those of us here, 
we will come to the altar as the elders will join us and we have a special prayer of anointing. I want you to believe tonight that God is able to deliver you. The Bible says if we come to him believing that he is and that he is able, then he will deliver us. So tonight, we will claim his miracles, his miracles of deliverance, his miracles of freedom from whatever you are going through. And we will leave this place rejoicing. And those of us at home, we will lock our faith in agreement. For the Bible tells us whatever we have loosed down here, God will loose in heaven. And if we agree on the matter, God will do the miracle for us. So tonight, as the elders take their place and join us at the front and the choristers will bring us before the throne in song. I invite us to stand as we pray to begin the service tonight. We are praying. Let us stand in the congregation. Loving Father, tonight we thank you for another moment where we, your children, can come boldly to your throne. And Father, we take hold by faith of the hem of your garment. We fall down prostrate at your feet. And we, with one voice, declare that if only we can touch him tonight by faith, we know our issues will be remedied. So Lord, take control of the service. Take control of the proceedings. Tonight, Lord, we will be using an oil, olive oil. There is nothing special about it. But Lord, when you bless it, it symbolizes your spirit that will infuse and take charge of the individual who surrender to you. So tonight we pray your blessings upon the oil. We pray your blessings upon the elders and the pastors that will perform the service tonight. Lord, may you forgive us from our sinful ways. May you cleanse us and wash us. Lord, prepare the hearts of the waiting congregation and those at home that will join with us in prayer, Father. May you touch them even now. And Lord, at the end, may your children testify that indeed the Spirit of the Lord has moved. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Of quiet rest into the heart of God. We invite the elders now.
Father, we have challenges. There are things that are bothering your people. There are chains that need to be broken off, shackles. We invite your presence tonight to infuse the heart of your children. We pray, Lord, that you render the power of the enemy useless that father your children would be free that they can walk in their true purpose that they can walk in freedom that they can walk knowing that you have delivered them and they have a new list on life father tonight we pray that you touch your children afresh as the anointing oil touch their foreheads may your spirit touch their hearts lord may you bring peace to someone who's troubled may you bring joy to a heart that is troubled tonight somebody tonight father is burdened with sin the guilt and the shame is overwhelming tonight lord we pray that your spirit will bring freedom as the anointing oil touch them and their faith locks to heaven may there be deliverance oh father we thank you we praise your name for those who live in the shelter of the almighty you will find rest in the shadow of the almighty this I declare about the Lord. He alone is our refuge, our place of safety. He is our God and He we trust. For He will rescue us from every trap and protect us from dreaded diseases. He will cover us with His feathers. He will shelter us with the wings his faithful promises are our armor and protection oh jesus even now may you deliver someone from illness there is somebody tonight that is watching at home that is not well they may be bedridden tonight but we understand that your spirit is able to touch even one that is bedridden and bring victory tonight Lord may you touch your children touch them at home touch them in the congregation touch them father wherever they can hear and they are listening in touch them Lord and bring deliverance we praise your name because you are able we magnify your name because you are able and we bless your name father we ask Lord for your deliverance tonight deliver your people once again Deliver us, O Lord, from evil men. Preserve us from violent men who plan evil things in their hearts. They continually gather together for war. They sharpen their tongues like a serpent. The poison of asp is under their lips. Keep us, O God, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve us from violent men 
who have purpose to make our steps stumble. The proud have hidden a snare for us. The cords, they have spread a net by the wayside. They have set traps for your people. Tonight, Father, somebody is being harassed by the devil. Somebody is being harassed by the imps of the devil. And we invite your presence to destroy every work of the enemy upon the life of this individual. Oh, Father, there is a young man that is walking the road and they are disturbed because somebody has set a trap to destroy them. Lord, we pray that your hands of mercy may reach out and snatch your children. Somebody is at home, Father. They are facing and suffering from issues that they cannot understand because it has baffled medical science. They, it, they cannot understand what is wrong with them because it is spiritual. Tonight, we pray that your spirit may visit this soul and bring healing, bring restoration, bring peace to your children. We thank you, Father, for hearing us tonight and for answering our prayers. We bless your name. We magnify your name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Have you been blessed so far? I know I have been. This has been a wonderful service with power-packed messages from our singers and our special feature. Not forgetting our choristers, but this deliverance service blessed my heart. Indeed it had. Indeed it blessed my heart as well. What was your favorite part of the service thus far? My favorite part of the service, I love the choristers. I love the special music. Every part is my favorite, if there's such a thing. But for me, the deliverance service was very inspiring, very deep. Thank God. Amen. I needed that strength as well. At this time, we are reminding you to share the link with your family and friends. Don't keep the blessings to yourself. Also, subscribe to our YouTube page, Castries SDA, and like us on Facebook at Castries Notebook so you can re receive the notifications when we post. Moreover, our prayer room is open to you, the church, and our visitors as well. Our ushers will gladly escort you to an intercessor. For our online viewers, you can click the link in the description, which will lead you to a card where you can send your prayer requests. So, Sister Sindel, the moment we've all been waiting for is finally here. But before you talk about the moment, I just want to shout out Lloyd Jones from Jamaica, I see online, and all of our online viewers. Oh, yes. The sermon for this evening is entitled, Resolving Marital Conflict. I wonder what this topic is all about. What about you? I am wondering also, I don't know what angle he's using, but one thing I do know is that it will be interesting, power-packed, and spirit-filled. Amen. This sermon will be done by our dear pastor, Pastor Favrier. He's a humble man of God who loves ministering to the people who are in need. Church, I encourage you to sit back and enjoy the message this evening. 
Before Pastor Favorite delivers the message, we will join with the choristers as they sing the theme song, Why, When God is in the Family, excuse me. Be, Be blessed. blessed. We invite you to stand and sing along with us. the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Loving Lord, we thank you so much for being part of the family. Lord, we thank you for the family of God. And we thank you that you have allowed us to be children in this great family. Tonight, Lord, as we open your word once again, may you anoint us, may you speak to us and through us. And Lord, may our hearts say yes to you, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Please be seated. Good night, everyone. Happy Sabbath to you. Those of you online, happy Sabbath. Tonight, is there a visitor coming for the first time? You're coming for the first time. You're somewhere. Where are you? All right. I also want to tell you, those of you who are in-house, that we have a special gift to give. Now, believe it or not, we are heading to our final week. We are heading to our final week. Time is rapidly approaching for us to close this campaign. Have you been blessed so far? Amen. I, I have been blessed and I know those of you online, you have been blessed. If you have been blessed, don't just type a B in the chat. If you online and you have been blessed, type a B in the chat. But next week, God's willing, we want to be, we want to take it to another level. Next week, God's willing, we want to have a fun time here because we are bringing down the house. Amen? In Jesus' name. We are not bringing down the literal building. We are just bringing down the house in Jesus' name. And we want our visitors from far and near to be here. Now, we have a special gift for you. Anyone that can bring enough visitors by the end of the week, you will receive a special gift. Ella Canton, should I tell them what the special gift is? All right, he tell me, tell them what the special gift is. The gift for, to, for Friday night... When we tally your visitors count, the person with the most visitors will receive a brand new tablet. Uh, you, you didn't hear me. You're not excited about it, are you? Those of you online, those of you online, you can join. You can bring your visitors. I know you have been sharing the link. I want you to bring your visitors in. And on Friday night, somebody is going to get a tablet on Friday night. Now, I must tell you, uh, there's one caveat to it. You must bring at least 10 visitors. Anybody here thinks that is unfair? 
All right, everybody say it is fair. Everybody say it's fair. At the, the list you can bring is 10 visitors. Now, the beautiful thing about it, you can bring the same visitors and register them every night. But I know somebody is going to come with 10 visitors from Sunday night. You're going to bring 10 visitors and, and continue. It's going to be epic. Next week, God's willing, we are going to have a fun time. And I just can't, I, I can't wait to share with you what we are going to be doing next week. And the message is, they, God has something special for you. Amen? Amen. All right. Tonight, as my reader here, good night, reader. Good night, pastor. Tonight, tonight, we are dealing with a subject that I think all of us, all of us would have at one point or another have faced or encountered. And it, it is something that you deal with at work, at home, at play, wherever you go, wherever there, there are human beings, we deal with conflict. Am I speaking to somebody tonight? Yes. And tonight, we are dealing with the topic resolving our marital conflicts. But conflict on a whole, and this subject tonight, we can, we can deal with any conflict, whether within the marriage, whether within siblings, whether at work, whether at play, we can deal with it. And that is where we take off tonight. Conflict is a natural thing, first of all. I want to establish that. Conflict, in, even in marriage, is a natural thing. Am I still speaking to somebody? Conflict does not automatically mean that there is trouble. In healthy relationships, it is normal for couples to have conflict. You see, you are two different people that have come together to live together. And you are bound to see things differently. And therefore, there will be conflict. All right? One study tells us, um, surveying about 4,000 women and men found that during spousal arguments, nearly a third of men and a quarter of women said that they usually kept their feelings inside during an argument. 33.3% of men said that when there's conflict in their family, in the marriage, they remain quiet. And 25% of women said that they keep it in. Now, one of the things that a research has found out is that when they track people who keep silent, when they get into conflict, it creates health issues, especially for women. Let me just quote a research here. It says, women who kept their feelings to themselves during marital arguments were four times as likely to die during the 10-year span of the research. That was a research that was done over a 10-year period. And they said women who kept their feelings inside had a four times greater chance of dying. So men, you understand why your wives have to be speaking up when things are not going right. If they bottle it inside, it will kill them. Literally. Am I speaking to somebody? So some husbands tonight, we need, we need to be just a little more mindful that when wives are speaking up, that we understand it's medicine for them. Am I speaking to a man in the house tonight? Men, you can see amen. And if you're in the chat, you can see amen. It's good that, because the same research also interestingly says that men's health was not measurably affected whether they did express their feelings or not. Men, whether they keep it in or they don't, it doesn't affect their, 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 their health as much as it affects women. So men, let's take that into consideration the next time you hear your wife talking about something. She's just getting her medicine. Is that all right? 
Tonight, I want to deal with a few steps that we can engage in when we find ourselves in conflict in our homes. I told you that conflict is inevitable. You must find conflict unless you are leaving with your shadow. And even then, you get in conflict with yourself. Uh, in our vernacular, they say, Lang egdan kanishis. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Your tongue and your teeth gets into conflict at times. And it usually turns painful. But I thank God that within the marriage, we are not getting painful. The first point that I want to address, I want to touch on, reader. Address the problem as soon as possible. Address the problem as soon as possible. When you silence yourself and you, you don't deal with the issue, it creates problems, not just for your health, but also, it is said in a research that was done between African Americans and Caucasians, that couples who, who believed that avoiding marital conflict was better for them early in their marriages and avoiding the conflict later on they were less happy two years later they were less happy two years later so therefore talk about it deal with the issue don't let it don't bottle it in and keep it the bible tells us the bible gives us counsel in ephesians 4 verse 26 do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Don't go to bed and you're angry with each other. Am I speaking to somebody? Deal with the matter and before you go and sleep on it. Now, I also want to tell you that you have to be practical about the thing. You don't just get into an argument and the, 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 you have not put all the pieces together and think that everything will settle. Sometimes you need to make time and make an appointment and say, we are going to agree that at such and such a time, at such and such a date, we will deal with that particular issue. Because at this moment, if we get into it, it's not going to be solved. We, things will get worse. Sometimes when people are hot under the collar, it's better you take some time to cool off. Am I speaking to somebody tonight? The other point, recognize that there is another side. Recognize that there's another side. Like a coin, there's always two sides to an argument and two sides to a story. So if you as an individual, you, are in an, you have an issue with your spouse, recognize that there's another side. You are seeing from your perspective, but the spouse has a perspective that might be different from yours. So spend some time looking at it from the other side as well. Am I speaking to somebody tonight? The Bible says in Philippians 2, 4. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Not only for your interests, but look out for the interests of the other person. For God's sake, you all have to live together. If you only look after yourself, then the, the, the problems will remain and will escalate. So let us look after the other person's interests and see it from the other person's perspective as we handle uh, these conflicts together. And we are moving on. The next point, the next step. Communicate. See the other side. Yes, we, we mentioned that. We mentioned that. Whilst we're doing that, let us speak wisely to each other. Uh, too many times we find ourselves just blurting out things and hurting each other. It is good to measure and think of what you're about to say before you see it. You see, when you speak certain words out, you cannot take it back. Even when you apologize, the, the thing has gone out. You cannot bring it back. It's better for you not to say something than having to apologize about it. Am I speaking to somebody? So hold it on. The Bible says in Colossians 4, 6. Let your speech always be with grace seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Let your speech be seasoned with salt. You know, it is interesting that most people, when they're dating, they speak very kindly and nicely to each other. And as soon as they get married, a few years down the line, they 
say all manner of things to each other as if that's not the same person that you used to say all the sweet nothings to. Yes. Friends of mine, let your speech be seasoned with salt. Let it be seasoned with grace, rather. Don't, don't just blurt out anything that comes to your mind. And if you're thinking of certain things that, you, that will cause trouble, it's better you walk away. Go and take a walk and come back. Am I speaking to somebody? Amen. So that when, when there's a problem in the, in the marriage or in, in the relationship, speak about the problem. Something is affecting you, speak about the problem. Don't attack the other person. Tell them how you feel. Tell them what you would want to see happen. And whilst you're doing that, use statements that are less combative. What am I speaking about? If you find yourself in a situation where something is bothering you and you need to deal with it, you need to speak as we said earlier, you need to speak wisely about it. Therefore, you speak using I statements. So you as the wife has an issue with your husband. You all both are working, and, but when he comes home and you come home, you all are both tired. He sits down with a remote and you have to go about doing all the preparing for dinner. And that is upsetting you. But if you come to him and begin to attack him, you're not going to solve the problem. Therefore, you need to deal with the specific issue. You don't go and attack him and say how he's lazy and, 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 and you, you, you think I'm your servant, I'm, I'm your slave. This will create a situation where he's going to defend himself and then we're going to lose sight of the real problem. We're going to be arguing all kinds of things. Before the night is up, you will be talking about his mother and what, and, and your mother told you don't marry him because his family is this. And you wonder, how did I get there? When all we wanted to discuss was my frustration with the fact that I just need some help preparing dinner. That's all you needed. So when you're dealing with that, you speak about the problem. I feel that I am enslaved or I feel like a slave when I have to come home and prepare dinner all by myself. You're stating the problem. You're stating how you feel about it. Nobody can argue with you about how you feel. If, you, if I tell you I'm feeling like a slave, you can't tell me, no, you're not. You cannot tell me how I feel. And then you ask for what you want. I would be very happy if you can join me in making it, making the, preparing the dinner. That will diffuse a situation and make it a lot lighter than having to come and say, you always sit on the chair when you get here and I have to enslave myself. You think I'm your slave or you think I'm your servant. The situation is going to escalate and soon you will either be sitting at the counselor's lying down on a counselor's chair or sitting in the office of a lawyer, a divorce lawyer. So, not only must you speak wisely, but you must also listen actively. Listen actively. The Bible says in James 1.19, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Be slow to speak and be slow to get angry. But listen. Listen. So the person is telling you about how they feel and what, what they're feeling. Listen to what they're saying. Listen to what they're not saying as well. Because there are certain things that are said by people's body language. As a matter of fact, our communication is just about 7% verbal. Everything else we do... In, in, our, in our conversation deals with our body language and our tone of voice. The message we're conveying is only a small bit of it that comes from words. So when you are listening, you cannot be listening to your partner talking about the way they feel and you're still walking around doing something else. You need to be able to see, look at the person. You need to be nodding and then 
you mirror what the person is saying now using you statement. So you are saying, this is how you feel. So you are, say, you are telling me, if I help you with this, this is how it's going to be. Friends of mine, when we speak to each other like this, we shall save a multitude of trouble in the home. Am I speaking to somebody tonight? Amen. I know in our culture sometimes it's a little difficult to adapt to things like that, but this will help us a, a long way. So let us exchange gracefully as we talk to each other. Talk nicely to each other. We are moving on. We are moving along. Put my spouse needs before my own. And we touched on that a while ago, so I'm not, I'm not stopping here. I want, to, I want to tell us that Jesus gave us a good example. Jesus gave us a good example. The Bible tells us in Romans 15, for even Christ did not please himself. So let's, let us look out for the interests of each other. Let's look Amen. after the interests of each other. And then the next point even if you discuss the matter and you leave it at that, tomorrow is going to happen again. So we must decide on a plan of action. We must have a plan of action. We must have you list down what is it that we're going to do, how we're going to handle it, and what we're going to do. Whether we have to put, if we're dealing with the, the example we use, we might have to say, well, we are going to prepare all our meals for the week on this particular day. Therefore, the rest of the week, we don't have to be preparing meals. I'm not telling you how to do it. I'm just giving you an example. But you have to have a plan as to what you're going to do to solve the issue. If you don't have a plan, then the problem will always come back and you will always be frustrated with it. The other point that I want us to be mindful of, and many times this can save our marriages mm -hmm. and save our relationships Say, I am sorry. You're never too big to say you're sorry. Sometimes, as men in particular, we find great difficulty in saying sorry. Say you're sorry. It does not make you less of a man. Am I speaking to somebody? Oh, yes. I know in this, in this, age, of, of this age of feminism, some women don't want to say sorry either. I want to tell you, saying sorry will save your marriage at times. Amen. The Bible says in James 5, 16, reader. Confess your faults one to another that you may be healed. Confess your faults one to another. You see, many times it's easy for us to say, where did my partner or where was my partner wrong? With the important question should be, what did I do wrong? You need to look at yourself and introspect and look at where you went wrong. Because if each of us look at where we went wrong, we will be halfway through solving the problem. Am I speaking to somebody tonight? Yes. And then the fi finally, we need to pray together. We need to pray with each other. I told you the other night, when you pray with people... You cannot continue remaining vexed with someone you're praying for or you're praying with. The Bible says in James 16.5, Confess your faults one to another and pray one with another that you may be healed. Friends of mine, brothers and sisters, there is another conflict that we need to deal with tonight. There is another conflict that we need to resolve. The two parties are myself and God. The separation is caused by sin. Because you and I were born separated from God. We were born. The Bible says that when we were born, there was, we, there was enmity between us and God. Isaiah 59 and verse 2 tells us, but your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your iniquities have separated you from God. And tonight, there are seven steps to get back in relationship with God. I told you the other night, God is interested in relationship with us. 
And we are going to look through seven steps of where we can rebuild our relationship with God. Am I speaking to somebody? Out of the seven steps, Jesus has taken six of them. Six of those steps Jesus has taken for us. He is not allowing us to walk halfway. You know sometimes we say we'll split it 50-50. Jesus has taken six of those seven steps and is asking us tonight to take one of these steps. One step, which is to surrender to him. The first step we need to take that God took for us is that he became man. He became man for us. The Bible says in John 1, John 1, 1, and verse 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning, God looked at the situation. God the Father, God the Son, and the Spirit, they were in counsel together. The Bible says they, the beginning, the Word was with God. The word Jesus was with God and there was a council of the Godhead. But then verse 14, by verse 14 we are reading, we are reading. And the word and was the word, made flesh and dwelt among the us. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us because something went wrong. Sin stepped in and there was conflict between humanity and God and therefore God stepped in to solve the problem and to put an end to the conflict. Friends of mine, God loves us enough that he would step out of the highest heaven so that he can save humanity. Amen. The second step that he took, the second step that he took, he died for you and me. He died for you and me. Romans 5 and verse 8 tells us, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, whilst we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ did not wait until we became good so that he can die for us. Too many times people, you ask them to give their life to Christ and they tell you they have things to fix in their life. Friends of mine, if you could have fixed the things in your life, you would have done that already. You cannot fix things in your life. Jesus has to give you the strength to fix it. All he wants you to do is to come to him and he will put your life together. The Bible says while we were yet sinners, God was loving us. Loving Amen. us to death. He was Amen. loving us to death. And you can see him. I could, I could almost see him in my sanctified imaginations tonight as he bled because 39 lashes on his back by a tough Roman soldier and he's doing it for you and I while we are still sinners. Not when we became Christians and good Christians and clapping and singing matching to Zion. He became our, he took our place while men was killing him and those who were killing him, he was taking their place too. What love. What love. The next step Jesus intercedes for you and I. Not only did he die for us and he bled for us, now he is pleading on our behalf. He's taking up our case in the heavenly courts. The Bible tells us in Hebrew 4.14, seeing, seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Hallelujah. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Hallelujah. The Bible says we have a high priest. Uh, we have a high priest. Friends of mine, we have a high priest. And because we have a high priest, we don't need an earthly priest. We don't need anybody down here to take our sins to. We don't have to confess our sins to somebody to translate it to God. The Bible says we can come boldly to the throne of grace. So tonight, you're sitting at home. You can confess your sins and Jesus will hear you. Because the Bible says we have a high priest in heavenly places. Amen. We have a high priest. Therefore, we can hold fast to our confession. We can confess directly to him and he will hear us. Friends of mine, the next step, Jesus is coming again for you and me. Amen. 
Jesus is coming again for those who, would pre who are prepared. Those who accept him now, he will be coming for them. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, the Bible says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel Amen. and the trumpet of God. For the Lord himself will come. Jesus is not sending angels. He could have just sent the angels and said, Go and bring my people home. But no, he's coming himself. This is too important to leave it for angels. He is coming himself because he knows what you went through down here. He knows the headache you had. He knows the heartaches you suffered. He knows what you have gone through and what you are still going through. And he's saying, I'm going to come myself to receive my child. I'm not sending an angel. I'm coming myself. I'm coming myself. Friends of mine, Jesus is coming for you and I. I told you the other night that your name is engraved in his hand. But for your name to be in his hand and for him to call you by name, you need to decide now on the side of Christ. You need to decide now on the side of Christ. God will destroy sin. Let me just let you know tonight, friends of mine, the reason why we preach, the reason why we plead, the reason why for the past four weeks we have been here calling men and women and telling them to surrender their hearts to Jesus. It's not because we want to exercise, but because we know that Jesus is coming again. Amen. And the Bible tells us when he comes, there will be a separation. There will be those that will have answered yes to his call. And there will be those that would have not answered yes to his call. And those who have answered yes will go with him. And those who did their own thing and procrastinated and said that we will get baptized next week or next crusade and never got a chance to settle it and died in their mess, they will be lost eternally. Friends of mine, when Jesus comes, there will be four groups of people. There will be four groups of people. According to the Bible in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 4.16, Jesus... Christ will come and will resurrect those who were faithful and answered yes to him while they were alive. So some of us here would have answered yes. Some of us online that would have answered yes to him tonight. If we die before he comes. When he comes, he's coming to call us by name and to bring us out of the tomb or wherever we were placed. He is coming for us. That's the first set. Then there will be some of us who would have answered yes tonight and may not have died before he comes. The Bible says those who are alive and remain will join with those that were dead and were in their grave that got resurrected. And they too will join and meet with the Lord. But I told you there were four groups. So that means there are two other groups. The two other groups would be those who were alive and did not answer yes to his call. Friends, tonight I want to let you know it is a dangerous thing to play games with your soul salvation. You know there is something they call Russian roulette. Where there is one bullet in a spinning chamber and they keep shooting and the possibility that one, of, one, one time when they pull the trigger, somebody is going to get shot. You cannot play Russian roulette with your soul salvation. This is a serious matter. Because you see, you may be thinking I am young and strong. And I have time. Let me live life a little. Let me have some carnival still. Maybe after carnival I will give up my life to Jesus. But you never know. That you don't have that time because the only time we have is the present. The only time we have is now. Tomorrow is too late. Because any one of us can step outside and find ourselves in an accident. And I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just telling you what can happen and what has happened to people. I am almost certain that all of us have spoken to people 
that told us we'll see tomorrow and tomorrow never came for them. We have seen people go to bed planning their day tomorrow and they never got up to go do the things they planned. So the next group, those who did not accept, that thought they would have time, when Jesus appears in the sky, they will drop dead. The glory and the brightness of Jesus will kill them. And those that did not accept and they die in their sins will remain dead. The Bible says, until a thousand years. Revelation tells us in Revelation 21 that at the end of the thousand years that God's people that he came to call and those that were dead and those that were alive that met him in the air, they will remain with him for a thousand years. What a vacation. What a vacation. Some of us work all our lives and we cannot take a proper vacation. We are tired, but we, we just have to be making ends meet down here. We are like a hamster on a wheel. We just keep going. We cannot afford a vacation. The Bible tells us somebody is going to get, those of us who accept Jesus will get a thousand year vacation. But at the end of that vacation, Jesus will come down here to establish his kingdom forever. The Bible says it is at that time that the wicked and those who did not accept Jesus will come up to face their final judgment. Sin, Satan, and sinners will be destroyed forever. Friends, tonight you are wise people. You know that we cannot play games with our soul salvation. Therefore, tonight, I want to encourage you to give your life to Jesus. Amen. Don't play games. Don't believe that I have time. I'm young. Young people die every day. We see it. We see it all around us. Young people are going to their graves. Some of them Christless graves. We are going through a pandemic for the past few years People died like flies, young, old, and in between. Don't take that chance with your salvation. And tonight, I want to, encourage, I want to tell you that Jesus will make all things new. Revelation 21, 4 tells us, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. Neither shall there be any more pain, Hallelujah. for the former things are passed away. Hallelujah. The Bible says that God will wipe, God himself will wipe away all the tears from their eyes. Oh, how I wish for that day. Because, you know, there's a lot of things down here that make you cry. There are so many things down here that bring tears to our eyes. When we look at our situation down here, there is always something to bring you pain. There is always something to bring you heartache. There is always something to bring tears to your eyes. But the Bible says Jesus, when he comes, he will recreate everything. He will make everything new. And when he does that, there will be no more reason to cry. For the former things will be gone. The things we know now, and the things we hold dear now, all of that will be gone. So don't hold on to things down here and not decide for Christ because of what you have or what you think. You're holding on to your job and you're, you're holding on to a relationship that you have been leaving common law for 15 years, for 5 years, for 3 years. And, 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 and you all don't want to, to settle it in marriage and you're just there in this thing. Knowing that if you die in this, you are lost. Yet, you are holding on. The Bible says all these things will pass. But those who accept him, he will wipe the tears from their eyes. Amen. There will be no more crying. Amen. So tonight, brethren, friends who are watching online, the final step is the step that you and I need to take. The step, because Jesus gave his life for me, 
I am giving my life to him. Praise God. Tonight, tonight somebody needs to give their life over to Jesus. Oh, yes. Or somebody needs to surrender to Jesus. Because we have done our own thing. We have lived our lives for ourselves. Jesus has taken all the steps necessary for our soul salvation. Do you believe that tonight? Do you believe that Jesus has done all that he could to save us? If you believe that, why don't you give me a wave? If you believe that Jesus has done all he could to save us, give me a wave. God bless you. Those of you online, you can type amen. If you believe that Jesus has done all that he could to save us, type amen in the chat. Type amen in the chat. But friends, Jesus has done all that he can, but he's asking us to do one thing. One thing, to surrender our lives over to him. Tonight, I invite us to stand. Let us stand tonight. All of us in the congregation, let us stand. Tonight, there is somebody. You have been here for the past few weeks. Or maybe you came a few nights. But God has been speaking to you. You realize that what the preacher has been saying is true. I need to do something about it. You see, when God allows truth to get to you, it's not to make you feel good. Truth is not spoken and preached so that you can just feel good and say, that was a good sermon. Truth is not preached to you so that you can give a tick to the preacher and say, you preach well. That's not why we preach. Truth is proclaimed because we recognize the danger that there is danger in not surrendering your life over to God. There is somebody online that is listening to me. And tonight, you need to go to the link and feel that card and say, I'm surrendering my life to Jesus and I'm going all the way to the watery grave of baptism. Because the Bible tells me, he that believe and is baptized, the same shall be saved. We must believe. Believe that Jesus has done it all for us. But he wants us to make a public demonstration saying, I renounce the world. And now I'm living for Jesus. That's basically what baptism is. Make, you're, you're feeling as if it's some difficult thing. No. It's a, simple, it's a simple thing. You are saying to everybody that I have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior of my life. Now you do that acceptance where you are at home. You do that acceptance where you are standing in the congregation. You can do that. But Jesus is saying, he that believes and is baptized. You know why? Because the Bible tells us that the devil believes and trembles, but is still not saved. The devil believes and he trembles, but is still not saved. You believe in Jesus and you baptize. Tonight, there is somebody, there is somebody tonight that wants to say, Preacher, I'm hearing you. I want to be ready when Jesus comes. I want to be ready for Jesus when he comes. You are standing here this evening. I'm not making a long appeal tonight. But you are standing here and you need to make a decision. You want to make a decision. You want me to pray for you. Join me up here for special prayer. 
join me up here for prayer. You want to say, preacher, I want you to pray for me. I want you to pray for me because I need to make it right with God. If that is your desire tonight, leave where you are and join me up here. Where are you tonight? Leave where you are and join me up here. God is speaking to your heart. This urge that you're feeling now, that God is speaking to you, that you want to move, and you're feeling that heaviness in your heart, this is a gift from God, a prompting from the Spirit telling you move. Let me let you in on something. There are people who have turned down that urging for a long time and now they don't feel it. So God has blessed you and you're still feeling it. Move when he speaks. Never deny the spirit of God. Friends, Jesus became man for you. He died for you. He's interceding on your behalf. He doesn't want you to be destroyed when he comes with his brightness. He wants you to be saved. He wants to be able to call you by name. And even if you're dead in your grave, he can call you by name and you can pop up and come and meet me. Friends, tonight Jesus is calling you and telling you, take a stand for him. Where are you tonight? Join me up here as you take a stand for Jesus. All to Jesus, I surrender. Surrender everything to him tonight. Surrender everything. And let him take charge of your life. Come tonight. Come. Give Jesus a chance in your heart. Come. It is the right thing to do. It is the best decision you will ever make in your life. I have never met somebody who decided to follow Jesus and have regretted it. Not one. But I have met many who turned their backs and regretted it afterwards. So tonight, make the wise choice Amen. and join and follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. I've wandered far Those of us who have already said yes to him tonight, you want to affirm, we want to affirm our resolve. We want to affirm our resolve tonight and say, Lord, I want to say thank you. Thank you for the six steps that you have taken to ensure that my life, that my life is together. Bless you. God bless you. You have taken six. And I have taken one. But I want to reaffirm my resolve tonight I want to reaffirm my resolve tonight you have been baptized already but you want to make take a stand making a resolution that I will continue to stand on the side of Jesus why don't you join me here as we pray join me here quickly as we pray I don't want to keep you lead let's 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 have a prayer together those of you in the chat those of you in the chat Feel that card. Feel that card. Those of you who are not yet baptized and you're in the chat, go to the card and fill it in. We are coming. We are coming. We are saying, Lord, we are standing with you. We will continue to take our stand forever with you. We are praying. Those who are seated can please stand as we pray. We are praying. Loving Father, tonight we thank you that you are able to give us peace in our homes and help us to deal with our conflicts at home. 
We are thankful tonight, Father, that you have taken all the necessary steps for our soul salvation and to put at rest the conflict that we are having with you. Tonight, Lord, we have come and we stand resolute saying, thank you, Jesus, for taking six steps for our salvation. We are saying thank you for giving us the strength to take that final step to surrendering our lives to you. We praise your name tonight. Lord, in a special way, we pray for our friend, our visitor who has come. Lord, we pray your anointing on her life. We pray a special blessing on her life. We pray, Lord, that you would seal her commitment. And Lord, may you save your child. For we ask it in the wonderful name of Jesus. We praise you for those online who are saying yes. We thank you for those online who have recommitted this, their lives to you. Bless us, Father, and keep us. And that when you come, we can hear you by name. We can hear you calling our names, rather. We thank you. We bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. And do have a spiritful night. What a blessing. The word of God is so clear and powerful and pastor makes it come alive. I was blessed by the sermon. Did you get the seven steps for solving marital conflict? Yes, I know all of them, but the last three really stood out for me. Decide on a plan of action, say I am sorry, and pray with and for each other. Amen. I also learned that he died for us all. He died for us. And all we have to do is surrender to him because he's coming again. Amen. We cannot keep it to ourselves. Send a link to your friends. Share this truth. It is important. You must know it. Don't let Satan fool you. I was very inspired tonight by the sermon and gained much knowledge that I will definitely share. I will share one statement now, though. It is dangerous, it is dangerous to play with your soul's salvation. Thank you, friends, for joining us and look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning right here and in virtual land at 9 p.m. 9 a.m. Thank you. But Deborah, don't forget AY. The theme for AY is, if you knew him like I know him. Wow, that sounds interesting. Yes, it is. Come and, hear, come and hear this wonderful message at AY tomorrow afternoon at 4.30 p.m. God bless everyone. God bless. And, and now we listen to our choristers as they bless our hearts with the theme song. Could you please stand? Amen. 